Right, so our heading was uh, flowchart for stationary points. And what I want to do is map out for you. You now know a lot of information and enough information and skills to actually make some choices. For example, the key choice that I was talking about just now is you now know two ways to determine the nature of a stationary point. You can use the first derivative, you can use the second derivative. And whichever way you go, there are actually different things that you have to do, and there's a lot of processes that have to be stuck in your head. So what I'm gonna show you now is, it's quite a complicated flowchart, so there's a lot of steps to it. If at the first moment you're like, wow, I'm quite overwhelmed by how much there is here, don't fret. With practice, you'll become familiar with the different steps and the decisions you have to make. But there is no way to get around this, okay? Uh, if you're a strong two-unit student, let alone an extension student, you have to master this, okay? So give yourself some time. Believe me, you'll be doing it a fair bit, so you'll get quite good at it. So, on the left-hand side, uh, where we always begin is with the original function. So we start with the original function, and then if we are being told that this is a question to do with stationary points, then we know no matter what, you're gonna have to find a first derivative, right? So from your original function, going across the page, by the way, I'm trying to do this, um, like my, my PDF that I'm writing on is an A4 page. So um, roughly try and do the size of your page, the size of mine, because otherwise you will run out of space. There's a lot to put on this. You're gonna differentiate, you're gonna find your first derivative. So this is the easy part. We know we can sort of do this on autopilot. There's not really many choices involved, okay? But then, as soon as this happens, what are we searching for on, a, um, on, on the stationary points? We're looking for the first derivative to be zero. zero, right? So what we are looking for is that derivative to be zero. Now, Anyone who's actually constructed flowcharts before, say for software design and that kind of thing, knows that when there is a choice of some kind, you do not use a rectangle, you actually use a diamond. So I'm going to draw a little diamond here, like so. Okay. Now, one of two things will happen. You may find some places, you'd expect most questions, you will find some places where the first derivative is equal to zero. So there's going to be a yes branch that goes from here. However, it's important to mention that at the moment, we're dealing with, like we're deliberately giving you questions where there are stationary points. But that's not always the case. So it might be the fa fact that you don't find any places where the first derivative is equal to zero, okay? So therefore, if that happens, that's really easy. There are no stationary points. That's nice. There are lots of functions you're already familiar with, we just haven't learned to differentiate them yet, where this is the case. Probably the easiest two are the exponential and the log functions, right? They never turn around, they never stop. There are no stationary points. So when we learn how to differentiate those, you'll find the derivative is never equal to zero, okay? But in most cases, yes, you will find a place or places where the first derivative is zero. So you can say at that point, stationary points, they must exist. Excuse me. Okay, so at this point, if stationary points exist, you found x values right there, but of course you want the whole point. Uh, it's very, very uncommon. It does happen occasionally, but it's very uncommon that they just want the x value. A lot of students forget that that's a thing that you need. So remember, on your, um, on your, all of the information you've written, you've got to go back to the original function, and you've got to substitute in those x values to get a y value. Now, if all they ask you to do is to find stationary points and not determine any nature, you're done. That's really nice. This is not too complicated. So this part of the diagram, everything that we've just done, this is about finding stationary points. Okay, so if there's a really basic, like a, a question 11 type question, where it's like, yeah, look, two marks, max. All we want you to do is find coordinates, you're home and host, okay? However, most of the time, they actually want you to do more. So if you want to find out more, if you need more information, like if the question says, determine the nature of these stationary points, then this is where the fun begins, okay? Now remember I said to you, oh, there's this choice. We can go first derivative or we can go second derivative. Um, the big question that I usually get asked is, well, 
how do I know which one to do? Like, when do I choose one or the other? There is one key question that you need to ask, and that is the function that you've got. Is the function, I'm doing it like this because it's going to be in a diamond in a second. Is the function easy to differentiate or not? Is the function easy to differentiate? Okay, so this is a choice. Um, it is worth pointing out that sometimes uh, this, this is a gray area, right? You look at the function, you're like, oh, I, I could differentiate, it'd be all right. Um, or I could go the other way. So this is a genuine choice, and there's a yes or a no answer. So at the moment, the functions you've been dealing with are all polynomials. That's all we know how to differentiate at the moment. Those are really easy to differentiate. So I would say, yes, function is easy to differentiate. If that's the case, there's nothing stopping you from differentiating again. So remember up here, we looked at the first derivative. Okay, Now I'm going to go to the second derivative. So this is what we were just looking at in the example before. Okay, We'll come back to that in a second, what happens after the second derivative. If, of course, it is not easy to differentiate. Um, don't write this down. It's quite easy to think of functions you already know how to differentiate that you're like, I don't want to differentiate that again. Here's an example. 4x minus 3 on x minus 2. You know how to differentiate that. What rule are you going to use? The quotient rule, right? Now, when you use the quotient rule, you say that's u, that's v. What you get out of the quotient rule is another quotient. You get another fraction, and it gets worse. In fact, every time you use the quotient rule, the derivative gets more and more complicated. So while it's physically possible, after I get the first derivative of that, I probably don't really want to find the second derivative, okay? Because it's just going to become um, an algebra-laden disaster. So if you say, is the function easy to differentiate? No, you don't need to go to the second derivative. You go back to what we looked at before, which is your table of values for the first derivative. That's dy on dx. Whoops. That should be a that should be a diamond as well. Okay, so this is the first critical branch, and then from there you're kind of okay, right? Uh, let's go with the table of values because we know how to do this. We established this, right? Uh, one of three things will happen that correspond to the three different kinds of stationary points you've got, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So. The first thing that might happen is um, there is a change of sign. Um, you're going to go from, I'm going to use a color now. You're going to go from positive to negative. So this is the first derivative, yeah? If you're going from a positive first derivative that's increasing to a negative that's decreasing, what kind of stationary point do you have? This is a, look at the shape, look at the shape. This is a maximum turning point. Look, I'm at the top at my stationary point. Okay? So if I find that this is the case over here, then I can draw this conclusion um, because this is the ending. I'm going to put this in green, you know, finish line, that kind of thing. You've got a maximum turning point. There you go. I'm finished. Right? Alternatively, Something else might happen. You might not go from positive to negative. You might have that in reverse. So if you went from negative to positive, this is decreasing, stationary, increasing. So what kind of turning point is that? That's a minimum. So let's put that guy over here. So then I know that's what's happening. But of course, there is one last alternative because you don't have to have a max or a min. It could, after all, be a horizontal point of inflection. So what does your table of values look like if you do have a horizontal point of inflection? And the answer is there's no change in sign. There's not positive to negative or negative to positive. You have a consistent sign on both sides. So that's what I'm going to say. Consistent sign. Positive to positive or negative to negative. So if you have a consistent sign on either side of your stationary point, then you know, cool, it is a 
horizontal point of inflection. Okay, so I told you it was a complicated flowchart, sorry. Um, we now have the entire thing mapped out for if we went through the first derivative. We tested out the table of values, we drew the thing up, and from there we can say, oh yeah, it's a, it's a maximum, it's a minimum, or it's one of these weird funky uh, horizontal points of inflection. Okay. But of course, the second derivative is our other option. So just like we're looking for sine with the first derivative, we're looking for sine for the second derivative, just in a slightly different way. So in order to make sure I have enough space, I think I'm going to try and go over. Uh, let's try and do it this way. I think I'll have enough room. So we're going to look for the individual value of the second derivative. It'll tell me concave up, concave down, or not concave at all. Okay. So what I'm checking is the sine of the second derivative, d squared y on dx squared. From here, things are going to branch out depending on the sign. So just like in the other cases, I'm going to draw myself a, a diamond over here. OK? All right, tell me what kind of sign, positive, negative, whatever, will give me a maximum. Think about it. A maximum is concave down. So therefore, what would send me over here to a maximum? And the answer is, if you have a, let's choose the right color, a negative second derivative. Okay, I'm using, um, I'm using red for negative. If on the other hand, we are expecting a minimum, then it's not concave down, it's concave up. So that means that the sine of dy, d squared y on dx squared is going to be Concave up means positive, right? So positive. Ah, so now we come to the last one. If you're neither negative nor positive, if you have a second derivative that is exactly zero, now what do we do? <laughs> now what do we do? Well, this is a bit of a tricky one, right? Um, we now have to go back to, just like we had a table of values for the first derivative, you cannot avoid now. If it's zero, you don't know what's going on, right? You remember my x to the 4 example? You're like, maybe it's a horizontal point of inflection, but maybe it's not. So you need to test on either side. You need your table of values. But this time, it's a table of values for the second derivative. So because you're not sure what you're going to get out of this, there's a choice. Um, I'm going to put my, my diamond here again, okay? <coughs> All right, um, so if you get your table of values, right, um, then a, a, a bunch of different things will happen. We already know, by the way, that this is a stationary point. We're just trying to work out what kind of a stationary point it is, okay? So if it's a horizontal point of inflection, then the definition of a point of inflection full stop is that there's a change in concavity. Do you remember that? Okay, so there is a change in sign like this. So what I'm going to do is, what might happen like this, is that there's a change in sign. Change in sign. If you went from concave up to concave down, great, horizontal point of inflection, or vice versa. So that's nice. But I'm going to choose a different color here. Let's go for, um, let's go for gray. Hopefully you can see this. Um, if there is not a change in sign, okay, like, you know, x to the 4, concave up, concave up. So what kind of a stationary point is that if you're concave up and then concave up? That's a, it's a minimum turning point, isn't it? So you could go from here over to a minimum, depending on what you get. What if you test it on either side and you got concave down, concave down? That's a maximum. So you could also come over here, right? So the key is, don't just get lost in all the numbers. Think about what it means as a picture. So now let's have a look at this monstrous thing. Uh, let's see if I can get the whole thing on the page like that. There we go. OK. So being that this is the first time you've seen this, I mean, certainly the first time I saw this, uh, the first time I saw this, I drew it, and I was still overwhelmed by it. I was like, I made up this thing, okay? Um, yes, it is complicated, but that's because you are not familiar with it yet. But just like, like tying your shoelaces or, or driving or something like that, 
is made up of many processes which, as you become familiar with them, <coughs> excuse me, um, you'll become increasingly comfortable with them. Um, I can tell you right now, um, a band 5 or band 6 two-unit student, again, not worrying about extension, a band 5 or band 6 two-unit student is reasonably comfortable with this process because they are so well rehearsed with it. Okay, So it might look intimidating, but it will get into your head. Just remember the critical spots there. Like, think about whether your function is easy to differentiate. There's a key choice. Okay? Think about the values that you get out of that. There's a key um, point of interpretation on each of those. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? I'll leave that there for a moment for you to take in, or maybe you want to snap a picture and redo the flowchart that you've done. The, the first time I drew this, um, it looked a lot less, I know you might think that's overwhelming, it looked a lot less logical, and I had a lot more overlapping lines and that kind of thing. So this is like version five or something like that. Um, oh, by the way, there's one thing that's missing. Uh, it's not something to add on, it's just something to help you understand. Remember I told you, oh, this step up here is find. That's what you're doing here. What's all this about? What are we doing? We're determining nature. So maybe you want to just lastly complete this by saying, have a big curly brace over here. All of this stuff over here is going to be, uh, I'm going to write on this upside down. Hold on. All of this stuff down here, the hard part really, is what kind of a stationary point is this? Is it a max? Is it a min? Is it a horizontal point of inflection? You've really got to think through what's going on here. That's where the calculus really comes into its own. Okay? <coughs>